we sing Hear our songs to you When we dance Feel us move to you When we laugh Feel our smiles to you When we lift our voices louder still Can you hear us? Can you feel we love you, Lord? We love you, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, we love you. We sing loud, hear our songs to you. We dance. Round, fill us move to you. We laugh it loud, fill our smiles with you. We lift our voices louder still. Can you hear us? Can you feel we love you, Lord? We love you, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. And our love is big. Our love is loud. Fill this place with this love now. Our love is big, our love is loud. Fill this place with this love now. Our love is big, our love is loud. Fill this place with this love now. Our love is big, our love is loud. Fill our lungs, sing it now. We love you. We love you, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, we love you. Everybody, welcome back this Wednesday night. Excited uh, that you are here. Uh, we're starting a new study tonight. We uh, we have been through a lot uh, <laughs> while we've been in uh, online on Wednesday nights. We started in Esther. We finished Esther. Um, from there, we moved to Colossians and Philemon. We finished Philemon last week. So this week, uh, we are going back to the Old Testament. We're going to look at the book of Jonah. Now, uh, I know a lot of us are familiar uh, with this book of Jonah. Uh, I've, I've heard the story. You've probably heard the story uh, from for a long time. Growing up in church, I've, I've heard it. Uh, Jonah and the great fish, Jonah and the whale, Jonah and, and, and whatever it is uh, that you want to call it. But, but I'm going to challenge us uh, as, as we study 
this book of Jonah, I'm, here, here's the challenge. Here's, here's my challenge for you is to don't be so familiar with the story that you miss it. Don't, don't be so familiar with what you know about the story of Jonah that you miss what this book is trying to teach us. I, I'm convinced the more I read and the more I study, um, you know, I, I, think, I think there are themes in books. I think there's usually one or maybe two overarching themes and then a lot of sub-themes. So, so, so often when we look at the, the book of Jonah, I, I, we, we, think, we see it as a book of obedience and rebellion, which, which I think the book does teach us a lot about obedience to God versus rebellion against God. But I'm afraid we get so caught up in that sometimes that we miss the theme. I, I think the big theme of this book is, is I, I think it's a story of God's mercy and compa- compassion. I think it's a story of God's mercy and compassion for Jonah. I think it's a story of God's mercy and compassion for uh, the people of Israel. But I think it's a story of God's mercy and compassion for people outside of in it, outside of Israel, specifically here in this book, the city of Nineveh. And so, so don't don't say, "Oh yeah, Jonah, I know this story," and and miss miss what we're what we're seeing here and and the purposes of these books. So, um, I, I think the purpose of the book is to show us the the mercy and compassion of God. I think. Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, uh, and then also verse 11 are kind of key verses uh, in, this, in this story. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, uh, here's what Jonah, here's what it says. And, and he prayed, this Jonah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? So Jonah saying, God, when, I, when you first called me to come to Nineveh, this is what I said. He said, this is why I didn't want to come. He says, this is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore, now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. So Jonah says, God, I knew this was going to happen. I knew you wanted me to come to Nineveh and, and, and tell them to repent. I knew that if they repented, you wouldn't destroy them, and I didn't want that to happen. So that's why I didn't want to come, because I, knew, I know you're a God of mercy, and I know you're a God of grace, and I know you're a God of compassion, and, and you would relent, and I didn't want that to happen. That's, that's why I fled. Um, so it's a story of God's mercy and compassion. And then God uh, t- tells Jonah in verse 11, he said, and should, I, and should not I pity Nineveh? that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left hand. So God says, look, shouldn't I, shouldn't I pity? This is a big group of people. And Jonah, shouldn't I have mercy and compassion on them? Like, so so it's, a, it's a story of God's mercy and compassion. So let's don't, let's don't miss that in what we know about the story. So tonight, let's just read Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Here's what it says. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, we're going to read verse 2 also. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. So, so the question we're going to answer tonight is, is, what do we know about Jonah? What do we know about this book? What do we know uh, about the person of Jonah? Just, just what do we know? Just kind of setting up some background. The first, that we, first thing that we need to see is the story of Jonah. What is the story of Jonah? If you read commentaries on the story, or honestly, if you just have a discussion with some people on the story of Jonah, possibly not at DeSoto Hills, uh, but, but other places, there's, there's argument over, is Jonah historically, is it a true story? Is it historical? Is it, it, did this really happen? What is this? What kind of story is this? And there's kind of four arguments that, that are made. One is that, that this story is a, is a midrash, and a midrash is basically a Jewish commentary on the Old Testament. So, 
Some believe that this story is just a commentary on the Old Testament. It's a commentary on God's mercy, God's grace, uh, obedience, rebellion. It's just a commentary on all of those attributes of God. Some are going to argue that it's an allegory, that, that every aspect of the story represents something else. And you have to be really careful, really careful when you get into allegorical um, interpretation of Scripture. You, most of the time, it is not a good idea. And so you, you have to be real careful of that. The third one is, is didactic fiction. Basically, a lot of people argue that this is a parable. It's a story... At could be true, probably not, but it's just a story told to, uh, and in this story, it's just told to make a point, uh, to, to teach us a point. Um, the, the, the fourth thing is, and this is, this is what I think, uh, this is the way I'm going to teach it, that it is a historical story, that it is a story about a man named Jonah who God called to go to Nineveh. He fled. God sent a great fish to swallow him up. He spewed him up. Jonah went to Nineveh, he preached, uh, they repented, and then Jonah got upset because they repented. I, I think it is a historical story uh, teaching truth, and, and I have some reasons for that, that that we'll get to in just a minute. And so, so I think it's a historical story with the overarching purpose being it is a story teaching us about God's grace, God's mercy, God's compassion. Now there are some underlying themes about obedience, that we're going to see and we're going to look at. There's some underlying things about rebellion that we're going to see and we're going to look at. But, but overarching all of those is God's grace and God's mercy and God's compassion uh, for people. So what, do we, what else do we know about this author or the main character? Some argue that Jonah didn't write the book. I think it did. There are so many details in this book, so many things that happen in this book that only the person who experienced all this stuff could know. Uh, so I, I think Jonah is the author and the main character. So what do we know about him? Uh, from this book, all we know that the word of the Lord came to him. So probably he was a prophet. Uh, from, from Jonah, internal evidence that he was a prophet of God because the, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Mite, and at this time, really, that didn't happen to anybody except for Jonah. Over in 2 Kings, um, <clears throat> in 2 Kings chapter 12, uh, we read about, uh, about Jonah. Uh, he, he was a prophet. It, it talks about him. He is mentioned there uh, in that book that he is a prophet. Uh, what we learn from 2 Kings about Jonah is not much. We, learned a couple, we learn a couple of things. is that he was a prophet during the time of Jeroboam II. Uh, that he was a successor of Elisha. You know, Elijah, who was carried up in the chariot of fire. His successor was Elisha. And then Jonah came after Elisha. And uh, we're, we see in 2 Kings that uh, Israel had rebelled against God. They had turned against, against God and Syria. Uh, the country of Syria was really attacking them, and they were suffering from that. And, but, but God uh, makes a prediction through Jonah uh, in 2 Kings that, that at this point, at least, God was not going to destroy, uh, to destroy Israel at this time. Uh, so even in 2 Kings, Jonah is, is, is um preaching God's compassion, God's mercy towards Israel because they were going to get something that they didn't get, they didn't deserve. Jonah didn't mind that prophecy because it was to God's people. What he didn't want was God to do that for other people. Uh, and so, so that's what we're going to see in, in Jonah. He's going to be delivering the same message, but he, doesn't, he does want to to Israel, but he doesn't outside of that. Uh, and so... Uh, and then also in the New Testament, Ma uh, Jesus mentions Jonah. In Matthew chapter 12, uh, he makes this, uh, uh, makes this point about Jonah of how, uh, you know, Jonah was in the belly of the fish for, th for three days and three nights. And, uh, he and he went to Nineveh and he preached uh, repentance to Nineveh and they repented. And so they are going to, he says, they are going to stand in judgment uh, to Israel who the Messiah is there, one greater than Jonah is there, and they're not repenting. So, so they're going to stand in judgment. Uh, and then we see also uh, Jesus talk, talk about Jonah 
uh, in Luke chapter 11, verse 32. And so one of the reasons I take this historical is one, Jonah is mentioned in other places as an accurate prophet of God. Second is Jesus talks about Jonah as he is a little literal historical figure. And he talks about him being, being in the belly of the fish as, as if it actually happened. And so if Jesus takes in it that way, it I'm going to lean towards that way and say that Jesus takes it that way. The other thing that we know about Jonah is really not that important to the story, but is that he is the son of Amite. And the only reason that's important here is because that's what helps us identify him over in 2 Kings. So again, this is a story of God's mercy and compassion and how God's mercy and compassion is revealed honestly when even good people don't want it to be. And they're striving against it. Jonah is going to rebel against this. He's going to strive against God and against the message of repentance. But God's message of repentance, of forgiveness, goes out. He's going to make sure that that gets out regardless of how Jonah tries to run and get away. The word of God is going to stand. Lessons that we can learn from this. One, for us, uh, we can't get away from God's grace and mercy. It, it it's there. We can't get away from it. Anytime God does anything in our lives, it is grace and mercy to us because we do not deserve it. The second thing is, we need to understand that God's grace and mercy goes beyond us. Jonah didn't want, didn't want God's grace and mercy to go outside of Israel, but it did. So often we get so caught up in, in our small world that we don't want God's grace and mercy or even if we want it to, we don't think God's grace and mercy. We put limits on God's grace and mercy and think it can't go outside. But guess what? God's grace and mercy needs to go outside of the church. And we need to be bearers of God's grace and mercy to the world outside of us, the world around us. We didn't deserve God's grace and mercy. Nobody deserves God's grace and mercy. We've been given God's grace and mercy, so we need to show God's grace and mercy to those outside so that they can see and experience and hopefully repent and come to God's grace and mercy. Looking forward to Jonah. Hope you'll be back next week. Have a good week.